Hello and welcome to Joe Kakaka's AvaCast. No, I don't have a funny name yet. I'm sorry. I still say Joe Dash Cog Cubed. It's, it's just, written, terri- written. just terrible. Just written. I don't say it. Just written. I can't even comprehend exactly. uh, how that would be written out. But this is uh, our Evangelion podcast. You're. I'm Sam. Oh, I'm Jim. There you go. <laughs> this is, yeah, we're Joe Kakaka, as you know. Um, so I'm a big fan of Ava. Sam has never seen it. I've never seen it, but I know plenty from <laughs> word of mouth. So we're finally into, I think, where the series soars. Like, mm-hmm. to me, this is like peak Ava. The the way that specifically we're talking about episodes five and six. These are Ray one and Ray two. Mm-hmm. The way that episode six is written, I think, is like perfect. I think it is like literally nothing could be cut. <laughs> uh, every, everything on screen is there and it's great. Uh, and I just love it so much. So, uh, what, what did you think of these two episodes? Very cool. A lot of good machine porn, mech porn. Yeah, we finally get like a real look at the power that Nerve has. That they they can literally just move heaven and earth to do whatever they fucking want. They, they can want. black out a country. Oh, uh, yeah, which oh my god, that is so fucking fantastic. <laughs> and like, it just shows um our our kind of like Misato's kind of like oh not Misato. Raise raise this one character that's been around since episode one that really hasn't gotten like any real focus yet. So nah. diving into her, making like a really complicated relationship with her and Shinji. Yeah, I think it works really it's well. Some of those iconic things that I've seen before from like these two episodes. So yeah, Ray Ray's uh, as I've said before, Ray's definitely one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I find her to be super interesting. She's got that kind of like it's like that same kind of character what archetype of like weird non-human like a person that she doesn't look- like have human emotions but they like slowly are starting to like understand well yeah from from everything she seemed like from her appearance alone she looks like a hollowed out ghost kind of look to her like she's not really human kind yeah of she's like not a real person that's yeah. kind of like the vibe but it, even just at the end of this little two-parter we already see like oh she's like she's she's starting to like reach out to shinji she, she's and, like, doing things for shinji like there's something there you don't get the character from her alone is more so like a visual getting mm. her character from every, every, every she doesn't talk time. she doesn't fucking talk or to she, and when she does she's just like very like brief to the point about it and walks away so basically we do start out with like the flashback of why ray got her undisclosed arm injuries <laughs> and eye injury and, and it's she, funny because you you had mentioned that last time you're like i wonder if we'll see this and i was like oh yeah we she recovered she recovered pretty well for 22 days I guess, she to did it's, it's funny because they try and put a little bit of time before it to imply that there's like she would, time for her to get better but it's but the amount of wounds she had it, sure. it wouldn't have been enough time she had an eye patch essentially and her like, arm was in a sling yeah, her arm was in a sling her so. legs were all bandaged up i believe her arms other and arms face were bandaged up too yes if you don't even know like she probably had like tape taped up her ribs and everything too Hey, maybe they just pumped her full of uh, whatever that weird stuff they gave Shinji in that the medical tube that like revitalized <laughs> the, the Saiyan, him. The, the Saiyan pod. Yeah, Shinji. <laughs> ki- Shinji kind of dies in episode he f- five. He the, he is like resuscitated and like put in somehow acquired more brain damage. It's like in in the Planet Namek arc where Goku gets put in like that chamber. Yeah, that's what it was. Him and, Ve- him and Vegeta both get put in that chamber at some point. Wait, I thought Vegeta just like took a nap. I, I, I Goku. He I, takes a nap like, in the pot of heal because he just came back from fighting after he fought like Raccoon and all of them. Because he fought like most of the Ginyu Force. I think that only Goku is in the chamber, but I don't care enough to argue. So, <laughs> um, whatever. Okay, but so yeah, we we do see the scene where Ava Zero goes berserk. Yeah, it's, it goes berserk, and it specifically attacks Gendo. <laughs> like it's aiming its punches at Gendo. I mean, we saw that as well with when. A- I thought we saw that a little bit before, where it's like they were like, uh, didn't the the first like the first episode get something got thrown at Gendo's window as well? When so yeah, when um, Abel. when sh- so there, there's like an earthquake or when when uh Satchel's attacking and Shinji unconsciously makes Ava Unit One move its hand up to block him, but it also launches a huge chunk of debris at Gendo. But that window thankfully held up. This one <laughs> did, almost did not. Yeah, it took like three punches. But yeah, so it, in dur- so it, first off, let's talk about Zero's design of like the orange one, where it looks it's very different. It doesn't look like it has like the mouth that can open up if it goes berserk and everything. Like mm. it's a little more, it looks more like a prototype. I yes, think. it does. Def- def- it has like no bells and whistles, which I like. It I like the the sort of Spartan design, the gray fox. It like... does. When, once you said gray fox, I can't believe I never thought about <laughs> that before, and it made me think like, well, Ava came out in like 
I think 96. So that technically would have predated hmm. the at least Metal Gear Solid's version of the yeah. of of the Cyborg Ninja. I don't know if the Cyborg Ninja looked like that in like original <laughs> Metal Gears cuz they came out like the ne- yeah, Ness one doesn't count. Ness, Ness Metal Gear doesn't count, but the first Metal Gear Solid. Dude, um, I'm not a Metal Gear Solid guy, so you have to tell me. <laughs> but yeah, it's very very funny that it does look a lot like uh, Gray Gray Wolf's uh, yes. Cyborg Ninja. But yeah, so it does go berserk. It shoots the emerge. Basically, it does the ejector seat, but like the, I guess so forci- forcibly like shoots out Ray. Yes. Um, against Ray's like the pilot's will. Like Ray has like no control. And over it kind of just bounces around like a, like a like a fucking like rocket just gets like caught up on something before like. It's it's really it's kind of terrifying because if you think about the speed at which the force that she's going, she gets like. All the slammed te- against the wall. All the technology, and they couldn't insulate it even more. The pod, they escaped the pilot pod, which seems to be the most important thing. Um, it's funny because I just watched all of Code Geass recently, and in that, there is a very similar sort of mechanism for every cockpit, uh, where it launches you out like back. And it's funny because like most of the time, like ninety nine percent of the time, it's always fine. Like it's a good thing to be launched because it means you're not going to explode and die. But like. I don't know. To me, getting just you're just basically in like a tiny metal box that gets like thrown like literally like four miles away. You have no idea where you're gonna land. You could land in the ocean. Many people do. I don't know. To me, that's terrifying. It doesn't seem like a good thing. Like even though in Code Gas, it's like okay, I got away. I got away from the fight and didn't explode <laughs> in my robot. It's like, dude, the robot could just chase you and kill you. God, what? what? It was a, it was, I think was a GI. There's something. I think it was maybe a GI Joe or something where like every time like a vehicle would be destroyed or air vehicle, they just see a pair someone parachuting so you know they don't die. <laughs> yeah. It could just be like that. They yeah. even pilots fine. But yeah, so basically Gendo is like worried for Ray in this and goes down there to retrieve her once they calm down the uh, zero zero or double zero. I guess I don't know. They just call it unit zero. Unit zero. Yeah, but... units. It's it's written out zero zero, but they call it unit zero. And Gendo, like this is how why he wears gloves because he burned his hands opening the opening the uh, the skate pod. His glasses fall off and they crack. Also, so that's why he the evil looking shades now. The very menacing yeah. shades. Which I think this is like it's really interesting how like tangible and real everything feels in the universe. Like the details of making like the pod really hot. Like, it just implies, like, there's so much heat and energy inside the Ava, and when this thing got, like, launched out, there's just, like... It's... Electricity gets pretty hot, dude. Yeah. And it's... I don't know. There's something really cool. It also shows Gendo being, like, selfless. Like, he really cares for Rei. Yeah. Why? Like, if it was Shinji, he would have just told someone... If he even wanted someone to save Shinji, he'd be like, ah, yeah. you, go get go get the boy. I I think... I, cause I think one thing that was spoiled for me is, is Re- what Rei... At least a little bit was about... It's about Rei. You can what you can say what you think it is because like I'm pretty sure she's like a clone that's like based off of their, his mother or Shin or Kendo's wife if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. It's one of the things that I think if I remember, and that's probably why he's attached to it so attached to her so <laughs> attached to it. <laughs> I mean, is a cl- the clone of <laughs> when she, she has, cloned like, Hitler? Is the clone <laughs> the person when she has no personality? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, a Theseus, a clone of Theseus uh, paradox. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, so he definitely cares a lot about Ray. Yeah, and... but especially because like because after that, uh, yeah, basically that's the entire flashback. And after that, you kind of get like at school, like they're like, "Hey, tell tell me about Ray." And they're like, "Oh, she has no friends. She has a blank pack. Like a she basically has a blank pack." They also say that from uh her background check. I think I forget some character talks about it like you know over over voice ritsuko might have so yeah there's another scene later where there's more exposition but like she basically had like no past and like we see her like talk like, like, like uh shinji sees her talking to gendo and, like him and her happily talking to each other which is like you're like what could they possibly be talking about like, it is really funny to think of like what could gendo and ray have a conversation about where they're both happy and smiling <laughs> like like hi you really you did really good with that synchronization test today thanks ray. thanks dead <laughs> <laughs> but i i love that shot so shinji sees this because he's in his he's in his cockpit and he the the expression on his face is like pure horror like he's basically the thing that he wants the most in his life which is his dad to acknowledge him is happening to this random girl who is not even like his his like 
daughter or anything. And just some random and girl. Th- also, don't forget the fact that he was gonna send her into. She she used her to, to get sh- the, the guilt Shinji into the robot. Yeah, but like, he did. But if Shinji didn't do it, she probably would have been the robot just for Gendo because we we do see that because because they're, they're also experimenting or like looking at the body of the with the Ava Four. Or the Angel, Angel Four, yeah. So yeah, that's the one the that Shinji fought. Yeah, the with tentacle his classmates. one. So yeah, yeah, that's that's another cool scene too. Like so I love like the, they actually have they show that Nerve basically creates like a facility around the fallen angel and, and like have like chalk outlines. Yeah, they, they also yeah they chalk outline where Ava uh, Unit One fell. And so basically the body is like like degrading to fast and but the core isn't like most... well the body the body is fine the core because shinji destroyed the core so the core is they can't really do anything with it but um ritsuko mentions that like the body is like the, totally fine like the dna like, it's like 90 like, like 99.98 yeah percent like human dna so yeah so that's kind of like a big early revelation that oh the angel dna is like almost human it's yeah. it's like the same thing yes uh, it's really funny like watching things that have come after it because it feels like i don't know pacific rim obviously took a lot of inspiration from ava yeah and i feel like not that in pacific rim the aliens um or the the kaiju are made out of human dna but the whole twist in that is that the dna is the same for each one like they're Yee. they're essentially clones in pacific rim yes um but i just think like you can kind of feel that inspiration oh, uh, yeah. in, in in pacific rim as well i mean del toro is a is a freaking weave so he did like Ava a lot too. He, he was kinda in uh using um Death Stranding. Death Stranding. He, he was kind He's of friend of Kojima. He was kind of in Death Stranding. I would say that's a good way of saying it. Since he didn't play himself. He just used his likeness. Yeah, but he also probably like shared some in he probably the same kind of thing of eight George of <laughs> George, George Martin. And just like having a big a, a big chubby, lovable man who's just gonna help somewhat in this one of his games or in a game. <laughs> uh hey, you can't say that just because they're chubby guys. They're de- but they're <laughs> okay. delightfully chubby. They are both joyfully chubby, <laughs> yeah. pleasantly plump, if you will. Pleasantly plump. Um, but yeah, so see, see, seeing Del Toro holding a bebe or BB, bebe. Oh, the BB. Yeah, uh, Ho- holding the BB. <laughs> breech baby. Yes. <laughs> um, th- but yeah, like so, I I just love like the detail that like we we see like nerve function in both these episodes. Yes, we see them function as this like incredibly thorough governmental agency where they like they uh have like teams that set up everything i don't know there's it, something about like the, the logistics they have they, they have a system for this that could happen before and you kind of see it like in probably like a normal thing it also has Shinji notices a burn mark on his dad's hands and that's when it, risco tells him about what happened with zero with zero yeah so it's one one little detail about the scene that i really picked up on and like so Masato's outfits are great. Masato, yeah, Masato's outfits <laughs> That's are That's the very detail good. I noticed. I like that she's always sporting something. Uh, it's different. so funny where like that most iconic outfit, like the other one where she's wearing like the cross, but like that's the one she like, wears the least out of this so far. Yeah, she hasn't really worn that too much. But okay, <laughs> but so what I really like about this scene, this little detail. So the last few episodes were all about Shinji and Misato's relationship. Yes. And so there's a part where Shinji looks over and notices the burn marks on on Gendo's hands, and Misato's like, "Hey, what's up? Why are you looking like that?" And he's like, "Oh, nothing." And then she she's like. Uh, but a kid she, says nothing yeah. that means something's pro- something wrong. Yeah, she basically is like being really hyper observant of his emotions and like his his like reactions. Where before her whole thing was that she didn't really care. Like she was like really aloof to everything. Yeah. So I, I like that's like a nice little like Misato <laughs> looking at Shinji, like analyzing him, understanding like, him, understanding him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like it's how, it's how you got to notice him. You live with somebody. You got to know their 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 ticks and their yeah. quirks. Then you know how to annoy them the best. Yeah. So yeah, we see we we like I said earlier, we had the school moment where like the girls are all in the are all in the pool and the boys are on the track and they're all both staring at each other because they're like, oh wow, let's look at the knockers on those girls. They're like, look at the guy. They're so, make me hot when I look at them. No, I the way I interpret that line is the girl says, uh, oh that kid, he's so gross that I, he makes me want to take a shower because she says <laughs> she <laughs> says oh, they, that kid makes me want to take a shower. <laughs> I interpret that as I don't care either way. I interpret that as the kid is so gross that I feel like I need to take a shower. When I'm either way, him. I feel gross of either one. <laughs> but uh, basically, Jinji gets from the two friends about like Ray. She's alone. She never had a single friend. Like no one knows like anything about her. Essentially. Also, I, I do like this kind of. So when you're like 
that that age like you're like a young teenager there's still like a really weird distance between boys and girls and like physically in this scene we have like the girls are, are a higher like, pedestal yeah they're they're like high up separated from the boys the boys are like like have to look up they, they, to they, them like the boys are on earth separate. and the girls are like in the heaven they are the <laughs> angels <laughs> the, the unattainable unattainable the, 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 the yeah they are the angels the, the feminine <laughs> ideal <laughs> They're the pixie dream girls are above and unattainable. <laughs> um, ooh, I just you just gave me a good idea of a magical pixie dream girl hell where uh, like it's like a, a circle of hell where every magical pixie dream girl goes. And the and the what was and the and male hate each other. And the what's the male equivalent again? The uh, the the the, 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 the gremlin. Oh, the, Wait, what's the, the male equivalent? It's like like the Travis Barker, the Pete Davidson, like the tattoos. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> I forget the name for them. I, I need to know what that. That's no, really funny. It's like it's like oh my god, it's like man manic. It's amazing, a manic gremlin. That's that's really funny. Dream, yeah, man, so, dream guy. Um, I think this kind of the next scene but we it's, see it's, is it's, uh, it's Retsuko, Masato, and Shinji at the apartment. I think e- yes. eating together. Where it's you know they're like, oh, Masato's cooking's bad because she just like she's a she's a goblin essentially for like her cooking messes. Where she just, just like, has like look, instant food. Yeah, she's like, look at look at my my qu- my high end cuisine of instant food. Or like this shit's gross. And then like. <laughs> and uh, Pen Pen just walks, just like has to eat it. He dies because he's the choo choo of Evangelion. Or just like, <laughs> well, what she she gives she gives Pen Pen a plate of curry and then also a, a beer, an unopened a, beer, an open beer in a, in a dog bowl, a curry. <laughs> it's like disgusting to think about. Oh, which I just think that's so fucking funny. But um, this is another scene where we're kind of getting more backstory on Ray, and also going back to the thing with Shinji, Misato kind of is like Misato and Ritsuko are like kind of teasing shinji about liking ray and it almost... you like you like this girl with no personality what a lady and i think this is like legitimately kind of interesting too like we'll talk more about like shinji's like being shinji being gay later but <laughs> okay give me that i heard about it but but there is a there's definitely a thing when you are probably months over like, <laughs> um when you're a certain age and there's like other people of a certain age, your family members will be like teasing you about it. Like, oh, like because that's a girl and you're a boy, like you must have feelings for it. There's like that kind of pressure. Yeah, the same thing when you when, when the guy, like you keep staring at her, you like her or anything? Like, no, I'm just like fucking curious about why she's like. Exactly. And Shinji doesn't really seem to like. I would say that Shin- Shinji's doesn't really seem too attracted to Ray in like a, a way it, that like a young boy the, would be. The but... only nervous thing that happens when he conveniently fall like sees like Ooh, nudity I'm... happens. Oh, we have to okay, we have to talk about this. this is like one of my favorite scenes in Ava. But but yeah, I so love this scene. He's so given he's given the task to deliver Ray's renewed badge, a key card essentially. Yeah. So he has to go to her apartment. And it's funny because before that you were like, oh, I bet she lives in like the slums, and it is like a shithole. I don't even. Well, we, yeah, we don't know. This, it is an apartment complex. Could be just. I wanted. To, I wanted to see if it was like another like alone kind of thing, like like Shinji's apartment is. But we only you know, got like her. There's not like a good. I mean, besides the fact there's zero I, people outside. Yeah. Um. I told, you don't really see like any signs of life. I told you it could be just like the Futurama like apartment where it's just a cl- like Bender's apartment where it's just a closet that you sleep in. But yeah, there's like. There's trash and shit everywhere. There, Not even in the apartment. There's like, just dirt. There's yeah, like she clearly like she walk. She like where Shinji takes off his shoes. Like, Ray does not obviously because yes. it's just like she tracks in dirt on her shoes. Which that's like a big. I guess that's a no, big no. Like, Japanese, uh, uh, <laughs> cultural thing. Like yes. oh wow, this is a messy apartment. And then you see her apartment doesn't even look like a home. Like. She has like a bed. It looks like something you would see in like trash. What, what's what's like the the like the, the, like a. Like home, like the homeless town, like the shack town, the shanty town, shanty towns, like that, where it's just like they're just doing whatever they can just to like. She know, has like house. really, she, really weird like setup of her, like, her socks are half filled vials and things and like her, uh, beakers. We see, we, yeah, we, yeah, we see uh, like her socks are drying above her bed, like where she would sleep. There's yeah. blood on her pillowcase. There's a it, lot of blood on a, her bed. The boxes are just full with her bloody bandages. Like she clearly had some like residual like uh wounds from from the the thing and just didn't fucking change her sheets like there's um there's like crazy yeah it's 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 very it's very unsettling and also it's dark and like like uh musky like you really feel like it's a shithole it's a shithole and you're and it's like that meme like damn girl you live like this i know it really is uh and then so the best part the reason why this is awesome she sees the broken glasses and for some reason shinji's like first of all when you knock on someone's door and no one answers do you ever just reach for the handle to see if it's unlocked um 
probably not. Unless I probably unless, unless, wouldn't uh, do unless that. Unless it's something freaky, like oh, she would never like she would never not answer the door. I would know she was like you know she knew I was on the way. Or, or, or like so you think she's in danger, but like no, you're yeah. just like I'm gonna let myself in. Oh look, glasses. I'm gonna put these on. I'm like I don't know. I'm what? really thinking. I'm trying to think. I'm thinking of like my coworkers. Yes. Like if my coworker, if I was given something to go to my coworker's house and drop it off, would I? Open their door. You, you couldn't put it in the mailbox because it's fucking filled with. Pe- with That's pe- true. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, he easily could have done that. And That's then really you, funny. No, but not only that, when you walk into their your coworker's house, you put on the glasses, you a broken glasses you find on their desk. Yeah, that's kind of a weird Shinji move. So yeah, <laughs> clearly Ray kept the glasses that Gendo had that got destroyed or, or damaged, I guess. So and she and she yeah he she comes out of the shower like nude with a towel like, be, like conveniently covering up her 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 boobs. Her bits. And then, yeah, then she cup- sees the glasses on Shinji, and then just, like, she's more, she's more angry. She just not even care that she's naked. She just wants to get the glasses off of him, and then hijinks ensue, and she, he he falls on top of her with her panty drawer, like, thrown all over the place, and his hand on a singular boob. It is a very hijinks ensue scene, but it's... But, but the, thing, the interesting thing for me is that it's not, like, whoa, wacky, like, hijinks you see in, like, shitty harem shows. It's more, like, she doesn't care. It's creepy. It, yes. It's legitimately made creepy like, by the fact that Ray has no reaction to this. She's like, can you get off now? And then just like puts on her panties. Like, what are you here for? She puts on her like her outfit and everything slowly. Yeah, she just, she gets dressed in front she, of him she, like it's nothing. She does the embarrassing, I can't look at you kind of thing. Of like, oh yeah, I'm here to drop off your badge because, you know, from Resco. And she just like leaves. She Yeah, she literally just leaves she take, Well, she takes, the gla- she takes the glasses off of him, puts them in a glasses cage. But I don't know why she didn't have that like that in the first place. And then she did, took them out to masturbate to him or something. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she. I think it's just crazy. Like Ray is such a weird creature. She just leaves Shinji alone in her apartment. Like she even weird, even, care why he even came. weirder. If you're just like over, you had a, you're over at someone's house to drop off something, and then they just peace out with you still inside. Like, like she didn't care enough to lock her doors. So yeah, and she she just. I mean, no one lives. <laughs> nobody else lives there. Still. Um. But yeah, she she literally doesn't like care about Shinji at all. Shinji's almost like nothing to her. But yeah, so Shinji just follows her around. But, but before we move but, from the scene, I just want to say, like, I absolutely love the scene. In any other anime that does a scene where the guy walks, oh in, yeah, it's always like the girl's like Kia and like Smacks slaps him, him, and it's like a big joke. Mm-hmm. But here, it's like it's unsettling that that Ray, like, clearly does not have any like personal boundary. She doesn't like see herself like she has no humility. I was like, damn, you guys sent this girl to school. <laughs> It's it's we and she just lives alone. Like who is taking care? of What does she eat? You see a bunch of like dirty dishes you, in the sink. You see, like you saw like I think we saw like one like bag of cans are like falling out. Yeah, it's it's a it's really creepy and it's she just literally he just wa- follows her to work and she doesn't even like know like that he he came to give her the ID badge yeah, until also, she tries it and it, yeah, it doesn't work. I was yeah because she yeah she tries her thing doesn't work like here they like here's a key card I'm trying to give you and she's like just keeps going. She literally like angrily grabs it from him too. She's almost annoyed that he's there. And it's not until they go on the slow escalate the slow down escalator, not the the fast up escalator. That... It is very fucking funny because later on in I think in a, the next episode you see an escalator. That is fine. Like both sides are going the same length, but the up escalator is like triple the speed of the down. <laughs> I love stupid things like that. Uh, but this is where she, they have a bit of conversation, and uh, Ray actually does slap Shinji. Yeah, because because he's like, I, like, why would I want to impress a shitty dad like that? Essentially, and she slaps him, and then and it just like confirms like, oh, Ray is completely motivated by Gendo. Like <laughs> the same way that Shinji kind of is, but Shinji's like. Shinji is motivated by, I guess, a different way of just trying to get his, like, a dad's approval or love or something like that. Whereas Ray gets the approval. Like, Shinji... He's doing it for him. She has those pictures on her pilot where it's a dude for him and it's all Gendo pictures. <laughs> um, And, yeah, I think... Oh, so the episode ends with Ray. So Ray hasn't been in her Ava yet. The, mm-hmm. um, Not since she got hurt. Yeah, so they resync up. It's activated. She's all good. It can't do any weapon stuff, but it's just a test to make sure she can like move around in it, essentially. Yeah. And that it won't like reject her and attack, which it doesn't. Luckily. Um, but then, uh, uh-oh, the new angel's Angel here. Angel number five, the, 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 the key. Oh, you might call it a key, but the it's The dodecahedron. Like dodecahedron. The dodecahedron. Um, it is Ebic, and my favorite, his name is Ramael. Right, name after an a- another angel. Another angel, yeah. Ramael is probably the fan favorite angel. It's, 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 it's probably the, the next uh, next most iconic next to the, the first one we see. Everybody loves Ramael. Ramael's very cute. There's 
There's some art I remember from years ago. Someone drew Ramail in the, the Skrull version of the school uniform. <laughs> so it's like a giant like yeah, tarp draped over. You gotta show me that. I'll try and find. It. It's probably easy to find. Um, but yeah, and then it just kind of ends like cliffhanger. One thing I didn't notice um, until this view through is like every episode. So every like arc has been a two parter so far, mm-hmm. um, and it works really well. I think because like this one, uh, similar to like the last batch we did. There's a lot of things that are set up in the first bit of the first episode that are paid off at the end of the second. Yes. And it's just really good writing. I just think the writing of the show is fucking stellar. Yes. They did a good job with that one. But I thought the episode didn't end with Shinji getting shot. It did, actually. Okay. So, yeah, they, they, they launched Shinji up, and they're like, hey, Shinji, um, yeah, watch out. The angel's right there, and he, he can't even fucking hey, move. Well, he, he gets up there, like, oh, and it's, it's energy level going up. Like, Shinji died, like, what? And then gets like, yeah, he gets... Sh- it's, it's a, the shot I noticed the most is just, like, it shoots the building. The sh- building, like, you see it the thing go through, it, and then it melts. A second, it melts, even. and then just goes through and hits Shinji, and you see, like, the chest... It didn't go all the way through. It gets, like, the third layer, I think they said, where, like, three more seconds would have, like, pierced it. Yeah, would have just destroyed Shinji. And, yeah, but, like, just, like, the few seconds that this huge, like, particle beam was hitting hitting shinji he like is basically comatose for the whole episode yeah he gets, they like they like suck him back down and then like the next episode begins they're like okay shinji died we had to restart restart his heart and everything like it's gonna take three hours to replace the part that got melted by by the uh by the angel like and then you do some tests of like so it's so funny they have like one to one scale balloon like wacky inflatable balloons of evil one. It is very hilarious how like accurate it looks. Like it and, really looks like the real thing. And then right away it shoots, and then they have a train can that shoots it, and it has an AT field, then sh- destroys the train. So basically, they have to say it has a range. We have to shoot it from a distance. Uh, we can't put zero in there because without because it doesn't have like the weapon stuff equipped. Shinji's in a fucking coma right now. He's in the, he's in the pod. He's in the Saiyan pod. And then the the ticking clock they have is because no one can get near Ramael. It has like a drill that it, it it's, it's like shooting it's trying, downward. So wait, so so Ava HQ is under the where the where the the city that went under is yes, right. Yeah, took so it's trying to assume it's trying to get to the Ava base. Yeah, it's trying to get to the Geo front for some reason. Yes. That's what that like pyramid so, is called. Oh, because I saw like oh they trying to get to like the body of the angel that was there. Like what would it do with it reach there? Like because obviously not trying to get the uh, the Ava wherever the creature the Avas are because. It just really shot it. Didn't give a shit. So like, yeah, no, definitely. Whatever they have locked up, I guess. Whatever fucking creature, I guess they have something <laughs> locked up down there. Um, but so yeah, they have a ticking clock. I think of ten hours. Yeah. So this is like why I love this episode it's, so it's, much. Yeah, it's like, it's like it yeah, creates it's like, like very little under under ten hours, like nine hours, like something minutes, like mm-hmm. fifty something minutes. But yeah, this episode creates like this really unique problem, and then it has the characters solve it in like such an innovative way. And this is where Misato really steps up. I think how good how, she is like, at her job. Yeah, Misato is so good at coordinating, and like she's so snarky too. Like I love the the part when uh, she's like, "All right." I have to like go requisition like the biggest uh, pro- positron Bro. gun ever. She's like, I got, so she just shows up to the place. She, and, she, like, she goes to Gendo. And she's like, okay, I got an idea. Here's the, here's the idea. We're gonna get a giant gun and we're gonna like fucking use it. And he's like, I have an eight point something percentage of work. He's like, oh, that's our highest we have yet. Yeah, go ahead. Just I have shows no how much with Gendo it. trusts Misato. Like, yeah. So then she goes to like basically, I guess like the weapon manufacturer. He's like, we're requisitioning this gun. Ray, take it. And she like lifts up the roof and just like basically I love takes that so it. Much. I also love the reaction of the, the 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 plant workers. They're just like, what? Like you want this in like five hours? How are you, are you going? Me? How are you going to have enough power to use it? And we're like, we're using the entire country. <laughs> Get everybody. We're doing a nationwide blackout for like eight hours. Yeah, and which I think it like it it does kind of raise some questions about like what about like emergency services? I know a lot of hospitals have like backup generators and stuff, but like there's there's. Like, people would die if, if they just didn't have... Not many people left in this country, I'm assuming. <laughs> I mean, it looks like there's still a lot of people in Japan all, yeah. all over, just not like... I mean, to- Tokyo 3 seems like people are evacuating every day. Yeah, but... But it, there's just a, a, something about, like, the way that it's executed, all the conversations the characters have. There's so many shots of just characters standing around talking, mm-hmm. which sounds boring, but, like, the music d- keeps the, a really good tempo for the scenes. Yeah. And it's so interesting seeing them, like, like you're, I'm like, what are they going to do next? Like, how are they going to fucking do it? And then it's, the cherry on top for me is when they show, like, long panning shots of, like, all the mechanisms they've created. Like, when they show, like, all of, like, the wires 
and like the batteries that they've like not only the wires rigged up to each other you see like the wire spools they had next to it that had to help you like unwrap them so you have like, the little detail like how they got that there yeah. to do that which is really interesting it's so cool and this is definitely i think like a like a uh, shin godzilla definitely just took that sort of ethos and like that was like the climax of the movie of like here's what we're gonna do like uh the whole first part of shin godzilla is all about like how bureaucracy gets in the way of action and then yes. this is like we have a team of of dedicated smart from like, from various fields yeah like uh, uh people working unilaterally um and they're working to create like the the best solution possible as soon as i can God. and it's so exciting Shin i love Godzilla. seeing Shin it is awesome it's very good i want to watch it after i finish this again <laughs> it'll be fun to yeah but yeah it's just i don't know i just love this episode so much i think it's like perfect yes uh it mm-hmm. just i was so hype i had goosebumps the whole time <laughs> I, lo- I like me some machine from gun porn especially like some off the rail gun porn Fan- fantasy gun porn i guess so that's the way i describe that and but, so but so yeah, we have shinji like b- they get him out of his, his stats finally like gets like get to a, get to a standard point to like use him it literally there are like bars like he has like a meter he, he green all four bars and then like yeah. okay shinji and they get into a hospital room where ray gives him his clothes and everything and shinji's pelvic bones are showing yeah it, the, so shinji's literally been knocked out all day and then ray just comes up to him and she's like yeah, that thing that like almost killed you, like the last minute you were awake, you have to come fight it with me now. You have a couple hours to do that. And he's like, I don't know if I want to, man. It fucked me up. Like, I fucking died. And so the interesting thing the Ray says is like, it's, all right, stay in bed. Like, I'll synchronize with zero yeah. one. It's not even like out of spite. It's like she just doesn't want to deal with him. She just wants the conversation to end as soon as possible so that she can go. And she also, um, they oh, also got to have a, a giant giant shield for zero zero one they, or zero they mentioned earlier they're gonna use just in case yeah so i i think i maybe i heard this somewhere else but like i'm pretty sure what that is supposed to be is like part of a um a space shuttle i think okay. that's the idea like it was like the most strongest metal to that survive just, like a uh, re-entry in the, yeah the atmosphere. so the, that's what why they chose that because it would be like super heat resistant and which i think also is really if you look at it it kind of looks like a, sh- a space shuttle yeah and it's just really cool it's like it's just going back with the awesome thing i love to see about like big robots holding big things that look <laughs> like weapons but yeah shinji does agree agree to get into a fucking robot he does see every time you're gonna see every time that people ask shinji to get in the robot he does and i'm like you, don't, you can't be mad. He literally fucking died. And his heart stopped. Yes, they had to use like they had heart a massage, massage they had yeah, a, yeah, they, to get him back to life. Oh, that's a little detail we didn't talk about. It's just like the, the Ava suit just having that like it was the thing I saw before, but I forgot about where they like they actually like tighten up on. Yeah, it's them. like a pressure. It's like a they they have like a little switch on the wrist that you press when you put it on that tightens it up, so it's like perfectly like up to your skin. Yeah, it's awesome. I love that. It is really cool. Um, so like none of it's baggy. Uh, I, it's just really cool. It's great, great animation too. Like, and then really probably, well probably the standout moment is when Ray and Shinji kind of have the conversation together, like at like probably, like in front of their mechs and everything. Yeah, I'm, I love that too because it's like it's like the eve of the mission, like the night before. Well, it's technically the night of the mission, but it's like right before everything goes crazy, they have like a little one on one. It's like it's like the, the zero hour essentially, where yeah. like leading up to it, and they're literally sitting like right next to their mechs too, which makes it it's the terrible. shots really cool. Yeah, and they kind of just have like a short discussion, everything where, where Ray basically says, "I'm going to protect you." Yeah, which that's surprising. Yeah, she protect <laughs> <laughs> Shingi attack. It's important she getting fucked up in the mech. <laughs> um, but then yeah, we have the operation. Which... We get her shot. We get the the shot of her standing up with a, mo- a giant ass moon behind her. Uh, yeah, the iconic with her small butt. Iconic Ray shot. <laughs> uh, but then yeah, the the actual like fight. A quote unquote fight. It's only like, I like said, two I, shots. I like me a cool ass railgun, like a giant railgun sniper rifle that has like you see like the like the, the shells like in it. It cocks the bullet. So out. interestingly, it's not even a shell; it's a fuse. Yes, yeah, it's a fuse, which is it's, so cool. Yes, yeah, it's very cool. Like have just ah, oh, this is so cool. And then like, see, it, he has like lined up like a sniper rifle, and it has like basically like you take the shot, you line up the shot, and when the when the two things come together, when it goes green, you fire. That's basically like the gimmick. Yeah, it's what Shinji's been doing. Like yes. every time we see him training with the gun. But like, so when he takes when he take aim at it, it also fires. It, like notices like I guess the energy like on well, all of Japan's energy. Yeah, they, it's basically a spirit. A sp- it is a spirit, spirit bomb, ball. Yeah. It's spirit ball. Yeah, and but the so first shot happens and like both shots miss. Like they do this weird thing when they both are the cross. Like, they have a bean struggle or they. But no, they kind of go like crazy because like. 
It's I almost mean, like two magnets. Like, yeah, they're like, mean, repelling they, each other. It's really cool. Yeah, didn't they say they had to like they had to compensate for like the Earth's uh, spin or something like that, it's, or it's the magnetic like, field? Yeah, the magnetic field affects positrons, so that they had to compensate like, for it. Yeah, so potentially like this is just speculation. The shot from Ramiel was like electric, magnetic, or, yeah, or electric. Mag- yeah, if it was electric, it, it, like it, it interacted. Whatever. The whole thing is like they both sh- kind of shoot off course a bit. Yes, I would say that the Ava team gets fucked up a lot more though. Like. It like launches like in, buildings o- or like cars over in, and shit. Yeah, like Risco and like or got like knocked over inside like the van and everything. And then they have to like rush back and to be shot too. Yeah, it takes like a second for it like, to charge back up. And so the other Ava fire or the Ava, Angel fires its second shot where where uh, Ray does the Piccolo saving Gohan thing with the shield, and Jinny fires the shot and fucking snipes it. It's fucking Cause awesome. like, oh, get aim for the core. I'm like, you don't know where the fucking core that is. Like, it's, it's hidden inside of it. You gotta get lo- like, we gotta assume it's in the center, but what if it's not? What if it's at the very top? Yeah, they were. They really were. That was a hail mary play for them. So but yeah, it worked out. I was like, they you're trying, you're trying Shinji to shoot the shoot the shot when like he's like notably being a terrible shot. Well, they say why they do that. There's a reason. They say that Shinji he's synced up. Yeah, he sync his sync is better than <laughs> Ray's with the mech. Yeah, for whatever still. Reason. <laughs> Uh, I mean, all you had to do was wait for like a sniper game where you had to wait for it to line up, and then like yeah. <laughs> it's like a mini game, like a Death Star, where you have to like, wait till you get close enough, and like the target locks on, then you shoot. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, then they blow, they kill it, and they, and Shinji gets Ray out of the out of the uh because Ray Ray's mech is like melted at this point, like partially the heat, melted. The heat was so bad. He did the same thing where like he gets their capsule out, he like his hands are like burned a little bit, like very mirroring his father. Yeah. And gets gets Ray and then like he he starts crying. She's like, Why the fuck are you crying? And he's just like Damn bitch. Damn like, bitch, you live like you, this. Can, 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 please just show emotion. Like and so he's he's like, like, how, beep boop bop. How does one show emotion? <laughs> he's like, you smile. Like, I will try to smile. And she does. And it's funny because like it's very awkward. It's smile. very awkward. Um, but it's, it's kind of it's kind of horrifying because she still has her like ghostly ghoulish face and she tries to smile. I'm like, I still don't believe it's a real smile. It's just like her being programmed to smile. And he told. I mean, he he literally said, "You should smile," and she does. Like, uh, it wasn't like she's trying to like process emotion because she even <laughs> says she's like. I, it's really awkward. Like I don't know how to react when you're crying. Like I was not programmed to learn how to react to emotion. But yeah, it's just great. I fucking love this episode. It's great. It shows like because uh, initially you kind of have this thing where Shinji's like jealous of Ray, and Ray doesn't like Shinji. But <laughs> at the end, they kind of. I don't. I don't like, think, I don't think she closer. hates Shinji. Uh, well, she only disliked because she made fun of Gendo. But other than that, she, she probably felt nothing about Shinji. Yeah. It, yeah. It's it's mostly like she just doesn't regard him as a human. But at the end of the episode, she, I, she I feel like does. she's like that with everybody but Gendo. Yeah. <laughs> she she required everybody else is just a coworker, <laughs> <laughs> even her higher up Jim. <laughs> but yeah, I think solid. I like I said I like the episode. I it like made me like, after watching Yushin Godzilla made me really appreciate those like little details that go into everything and like I I love that. I love the small details. It adds so much. Ironically, you would think that small details wouldn't add a bunch, and, but and you get, need those to really make the world feel and, real. Like, that's the best way to, to do a character. You want to do a character that doesn't have like emotion or like you know it's like they're not very human where like, you get those characteristics by their visuals of like the apartment and i really like seeing that as well i'm like how does this bitch have a clean school uniform <laughs> yeah maybe they... she must smell like, he, i'm surprised she, she took a shower <laughs> yeah well, at least at least we know she like, bathes. when they get like i want you to wipe your memory of nothing but fine dining and breathing and cleaning yourself <laughs> yeah shower showering breathing and <laughs> ava powering <laughs> yeah <laughs> What I learned in Poor Ray. <laughs> when she, she doesn't know, she didn't know it was a joke. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I like this is like everything I like about Ano shit. So it's fantastic. As I said, one of my favorite episodes. I don't know if I would say it's my favorite. But Probably my ep- favorite two parter so far. I think this personally. is definitely out of what we've seen. This is my favorite. Like, like I got seen, gave, me, gave me some Masato stuff in it, which I like. I love me some Masato. This is like peak Masato too, because mm-hmm. we get both sides of it. We get like the weird crazy person and also a super there, competent like there commander. was one shot that made me laugh like crazy which was pen pen staring at the night sky i thought that was fucking hysterical that part was really funny because it wasn't even like a joke it was like legitimately just like 
A, it's like, it's like a it's shadow. Just like it's, Pen Pen it's, is like it's, also it's, here. If you shot like an anime ED of like a character staring <laughs> to like the night sky, <laughs> but just a fucking penguin. It's yeah. a, a nameless penguin. I forgot about that part. It was funny. <laughs> it's, I don't understand. I wouldn't risk it to be like, what the fuck do you live with a penguin for? You didn't tell anybody about nah, this. It's just. It's always been like that. It's always been that way. Pen Pen, who's flicking off the lights? <laughs> pen Pen. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's great. I think a fun, it's an interesting Ray episode. Where there's still plenty to go with her, but we're gonna get to the Oscar episodes next, which I'm excited for. Yeah, Oscar. Then that's also another standout. So we have the Oscar episode. episode then we get to the episode that you say that is as notoriously known as the most hated episode in oh, Evangelion. We'll get to it. Yeah, Magma Diver. Can, can it? Is it regarded worse than this Hot Spring episode of Gurren Lagann? Um, no, because that one's like hated. Uh, it's funny that you say hot springs though, because that might have something. Oh no! To do with it. Not the same guy they did for the Gurren Lagann episode, it's is certainly it? Not no. Because <laughs> I guess they did a horrible episode of, of Dororo that was notoriously also hated yeah. that he did. And then he died. And then he died. He died uh, in 2020. I <laughs> left think. a bad legacy. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Infamous legacy that he left. Um. No comment. No cop. <laughs> but yeah, um Eva Galleon, I like I like it. It's very good. It, it keeps getting better. I can't believe that like after seeing it so many times and like like the it's been I've it's been almost 10 years since I first saw Ava. Um and I still find it to be so impactful and well-written and just compelling mm-hmm. it just yeah it's really cementing its top a, a spot at like top of my favorites it's, it's still holding up certainly yeah certainly we're only in the early parts of it too so yeah it definitely does get better like we're i feel like it pe- it's it sort of peaks like near mid to end but we'll we'll so we're just getting better and better and we get to the higher angels at least like the design wise so we need to see what they do afterwards uh i do want to say i don't want to talk about the rebuilds too much but this are we are we do we are are we going to cover the rebuilds? I think we might. I'm not really rushing to do it, honestly. But um, because like rebuild one is basically just what we've seen so far. Like so we, it's maybe, basically maybe. just the first six episodes condensed, okay. and they add some. They add a little bit, and the, it, maybe maybe cover two two of the rebuilds as one. Episode. Maybe I was. At least the first two. Actually, that's probably a really good way to do it. At because, least the first two, at least. Yeah, the first because the the first one and the first half of the second one are basically like recap cl- closer. Like... Not really recap, but they're way closer to the original series, and then they start expanding into their own. Okay. Uh, sort of like parallel plot. Hmm. But um, the Ramiel fight in the movie does look incredible, and like I'm excited to see that. Yeah, the the parts when like Ramiel shoots its laser are some of like the coolest like there's a part where like it shoots a laser at them and like it there's like a mountain in the way and the mountain just melts it's yeah. like a, it's fucking awesome it's, i kind of want to talk about that real quick about like, the design of that where like the first two angels we've seen are very like they're they look like kaijus essentially yeah where this one is just like, like a because they do call it like, an unidentified flying object which is very like reminds me of what a lot of ufos are and like other people always think the flying saucer ufo but a lot mm. of them are just like they're like weird there are many different ufo but a lot of them like are weird unique shapes that are like undescribable essentially or like very oddly like detailed yeah. and this is like also it had a thing where like it had like lights light up in like the middle of it like mm-hmm. those like bar those look like led kind of thing and like it's so interesting to kind of go with an actual like more alien design like not ju- not just alien of like oh it's just a fucking kaiju no it's just a, it's a weird weird flying ufo you can't really describe other than just like i guess it's like close encounters where it's just like a really weird looking ship and it's like a creature too that's the neat part like it's so incomprehensible and it just shoots a laser it, out of itself to, like yeah. out of the, it doesn't have like a weird like or it, it's just like it, you don't have to have make it organic these angels are more than just kaiju that the angels can fight they have to like work around whatever design that pops up now Mm-hmm. And, I I think Ramel so it's so creative to have like this weird giant like dodecahedron. Yes. Also, it's interesting too. Like you were saying, because when it started drilling, you're like, what is it trying to do? Like, what is it going to do when it breaks through? And that's kind of like the cool part. It's like you don't know what it would do next. Yeah. Like, it's so weird and, and it, alien. It might not even be going for the Eva facility. It could just be going for the center of the fucking Earth to destroy the core of the Earth or something. I don't yeah, know. It certainly was aiming for the geofront, but. <laughs> It, they seem to all be heading towards Tokyo 3 for a reason. Yeah, so. it's true. They all are going to one area. So, but yeah, that, that, like I like a good variety of monster designs. And that's pretty interesting to have like the non-creature one. 
Yeah, there's. I'm just trying to think of the next few. Um, there's some pretty good ones still coming up. We'll see. There, I feel like it's hard to be more iconic than like Satchel or Ramiel, but there's there's some really cool ones. Yeah, you need to get the uh, like a stream of uh, the Eva N64 game. Yeah, I've always there's actually two. I think two. I know. Um, I, know I know there's like a Mugen Eva game as well. I kind of want to like. Oh, try I think to I've... Find. I remember, I remember they're the best friends. He did a uh, like a Friday Night Fisticuffs of it, I think. Yeah, I think I might have watched. It. I remember seeing that years ago. Uh, <laughs> but there's a interestingly the the Ava game. It's it's almost kind of like a bunch of different mini games because like each fight, quote unquote angel fight, is like it's it's not like a game like where it's like a beat 'em up where you just go and punch. Yeah. Each one is like set up differently. Like as you've seen, like the first one. Is more of like a fight. This one though, it's like a sniper. One. It can't can't be Utna that got like a uh, romance game where introducing oh, yeah. a new ca- introducing a new character into it. I forgot that. It, yeah, Utna got like a, a dating sim. It took Doki Memorial, but it was Utna, <laughs> and you and you are your own OC as well, which is like the oh, funniest thing of that. You love to see it. <laughs> but yeah, I I yeah, but just um, I want to ch- I'll check out the Ava game eventually. I just think it's interesting that each like encounters like a bespoke element it's, yeah it, or a, a bespoke level i can always see if i can find the mujin of it and stream that too yeah, that'd did, be fun i did the jojo mujin so i can probably figure out the uh the the ava one but i have to wait i'll wait till we finish that actually i think i did download that on like my old old laptop hmm. uh and i i didn't pl- enjoy it too much i think the i'm Mugen pretty sure i did the ava game the, the ava one okay. i'm pretty sure i downloaded the i don't know if I, I maybe i couldn't get it to work i don't, I don't remember playing it much hmm. but Nope, I'll play around. It was it was years ago. But anything else you want to say about Ray? Mm, One and nope. two? Not an L. All right, I think not an L. We have to wait for Ray three next. Is that really good? Do they actually have like continuations of that later oh, you'll on? You'll see. You'll see. I mean, are they actually titled Ray three and four though? Oh, you'll see. Why? <laughs> that spoiler? There is an episode that is called Ray three. That's it's, really funny. It's not until like near the very end. Though. That's really funny though. They actually like, have that later on. It's like, oh yeah, this is just Ray part three, like episode twenty. <laughs> yeah, you have to skip. You have to do the Ray, the Ray run. The, 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 the Ray order. Yeah, the Ray order. The Jim Kaka order. <laughs> you watch episode the gym four, order. Five, six, and then fourteen. The Jim Kaka order. We watch episodes <laughs> one to four, then watch Rebuild. <laughs> oh my god. That and then suck. watch End of Evangelion. <laughs> that would fucking suck. But uh, okay, I guess, can't, should we uh just plug it pl- plug in the uh the, the the fuse yeah plug the fuse in plug the fuse and drain the power from the entire state of new <laughs> all jersey america from, from all new jersey yeah <laughs> thank you all for checking this episode out you can do all the youtube stuff of like comment subscribe all that stuff you can follow the podcast on twitter or medium separately you can also join our discord and that's all the plugs he got and with that, I guess we're on to Asuka stuff, or introduction to Asuka. Yeah, well, well, we have one more episode before Asuka, but... She's in the next episode. Not the next one. She's not in the next one? Not the next one. Damn it. <laughs> but soon. The next one's pretty good. It's a good, like, standalone one, you'll see. Ah, uh, a true standalone complex. It's true, yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for joining. Tune in next week. I still don't know what day these come out on. Maybe Tuesday. Maybe they're coming out Tuesday and Thursday. Nah, they're probably no, not. No, don't do... <laughs> they're weekly. Um, enjoy your weekly uh, Ava cast next week. Um, bye. Bye bye. <laughs>